Naughty, naughty. Who's breaking duty cycle limits today then? Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today I want to talk about interference on mesh radio networks. So basically the sort of interference you're going to come up against um, that is going to impact your mesh core experience and cause retries and like messages not going through, not getting correct paths, all this sort of stuff. So the first thing I want to say here is that mesh core, mesh tastic, reticulum, all these, they use radio and it's subject to interference and problems. So effectively most of these systems systems are using the ISM bands, which is a small portion of the radio spectrum that is allocated for license free. Basically, it's a free for all. Anyone can do what they want there to an extent. Um, there are some rules or regulations, but it does seem to me a lot of the other users in this portion of the spectrum just don't really care about that. And they're just kind of just doing whatever they want. And it's not going to get enforced, so nobody cares. Right, so I'm going to try and show you what I mean here by looking at my SDR, which is a software-defined radio, and that is plugged into my PC, running a bit of software called AirSpy, and it allows you to visually see radio spectrum, so you can see what's going on in a portion of the band. And the portion of the band we're looking at is where MeshCore operates. MeshCore actually operates in the middle section between this 869 and 870. Um, so, you know, it's not, take, it's not going across this whole blue area. But what you can see here is lots of stuff happening. There's kind of little lines, little kind of bits and pieces popping up. And those are little transmissions. So those are like little transmissions from maybe smart meters, water meters, telemetry in the area. Um, we're only running on quite a small antenna here with that. So you're gonna pick up stuff that's pretty strong um, on that. But what you can see is there's definitely some activity. And you might have noticed, and that one's quite strong there, you might have noticed that this section in the middle, there's a line that appears dead on 869, around 869, 500 actually, not dead on. but it's transmitting every, what, 20 seconds, something like that. Now, that just happens to be right in the middle of where we are using um, MeshCore. So <laughs> if we look at, if we grab my T-Deck here and we do a quick, quick transmit, um, so I'll just type a quick message and then send it out. So you can see here, it's actually taken quite a large portion of the band, but it's it's not in reality. That's just because it's it's over modulating on the receiver and you're seeing a bigger area. It's actually just where that red section is. But the point I'm trying to make here is that little line is colliding with our mesh core transmissions. And while it's on, we won't be receiving anything. So let's just demonstrate this then. So I've got Epim repeater up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get some stats from this repeater. Um, and I'm going to wait until this little carrier has gone. So I'm going to hit get stats now. And we should see the Epim repeater should come back pretty quick like it has um, with its stats and everything else. Now, obviously the air was clear then. Let's try it when we've got that little line in place. So I'm going to get ready on the get stats button. When that little line comes up on the screen, any second now probably I'm going to hit go right see we did not get a response from the repeater and we've now got a timeout so that just shows you let's do it in clear air again just to show you that it's pretty reliable so there you go that's gone and then we'll do another one when that line comes up so just about now probably now, we actually got that. You see that because that line was actually, it had actually finished. That was a short transmission. So you can see the principle. Um, so we'll just try it again just to show you. All right, so we've got it there because it's a very short line. Actually, that was a different carrier, wasn't it, that one? So, all right, one more time. And you can see nothing came back from the repeater that time, whereas it probably will this time. There you go. So you can see how that is affecting a station, even though that station's actually quite strong. So just that little line is enough to take out a pretty strong station. Interesting. So what this will mean to the user is that whilst that little line's there, whilst that transmitter is transmitting, it's going to block your receive. So that could mean you might not receive public messages or some public messages whilst that is present there. And you won't be able to get paths. You won't be able to kind of get acknowledgements to messages like delivery reports, all of that, because MESCO is obviously a two way thing. It transmits as well as it listens. But if it's listening whilst there's something else there blocking it, you won't hear that 
response back. So what can we do about this then? Well, we've actually been working on a new feature this week, um, which attempts to avoid interference situations like this. And I'm gonna show you how it works. So if we go into my repeater here, which is Hartford Omni, we have a new feature which we can enable. And that feature is called int.thresh. This is in the CLI of the repeater, so you can turn this on. Now, the number 14 next to it is the threshold. You can experiment with different numbers on this, but this is what I've been using, and 14 seems to be working well here. So how does this work then? Well, let's go back to the SDR, and I'll show you. Right, so back on the SDR, I've got the T-deck here. You can see our line coming in there, blocking our signals. And what I'm going to do is the line's finished now, so I'm going to try and get a get stats from the repeater. And we can see that the repeater comes back pretty quickly. So that's good. That's what we expect. Now, what happens, because we've got this new setting on, what happens if we try and get stats whilst this line is present? Let's just wait for that line to happen, and then we're going to hit get stats. Now, nothing happens, you see, but right at the end we actually get our get stats. So we've avoided that interference. So let's try that again and I'll explain what happens. So the T-deck transmits, tries to get a get stat. Now the T-deck can transmit because it doesn't hear that interference. It hasn't got a good enough aerial. So it transmits regardless. The repeater receives the packet from the T-deck because it's quite nearby and it overpowers that noise. But instead of immediately retransmitting the packet, it waits until the noise has dropped before it does that. And in that way, when the response from Epping repeater comes back, it's in the clear, so we receive it. So this new interference avoidance thing will go half of the way to helping me with this situation that I've got where there's like a, a transmission every 20 seconds. I say half of the way because this interference might actually only be present at my station. So other stations out there won't know about this interference so they won't hold off transmitting. So there's no real way of avoiding that because radio is gonna be different in different areas. But one thing I have noticed from doing a little bit of testing is that this interference is actually present in this entire town and it transmits exactly the same time on the same kind of schedule. I think it's actually the same transmitter but it seems to sort of cover this whole town area. So in that way, if all the repeaters in the town had this setting enabled, then they would all avoid that interference in theory. So we've got this new feature running on the T-Deck as well. And if you have a T-Deck, you're in for a bit of a treat. So now on the top left of the T-Deck screen, when it detects a signal, any signal, not just LoRa, it could be anything, it literally shows a little green dot up the top there. So you can see here, it's detecting just a simple little carrier, very, very low power before anyone gets on their high horse about transmitting on, on band here. But yeah, this literally will get about as far as the desk. But yeah, you can see, that little green dot is lighting up there when it detects a signal. While that's happening, the T-Deck will not transmit. The reason why the T-Deck was transmitting in my earlier tests is because the antenna inside here wasn't quite good enough to pick up that um, carrier from, from, out, from the outside world, whereas the repeater would be getting it super strong and the SDR in here has a fair chance because it's got an external antenna. So the little green light feature will be coming soon and yeah, I absolutely love it. It kind of makes this thing feel a little bit more alive. Like if you, if you kind of send a message out, you can actually see, you know, when you get a response from the repeater, it will actually kind of, it will do a little double flash there. So cool. Now I will say this is not a fix for everything. We've heard of some pretty bad situations um, on 869.525, traffic light systems that kind of just transmit continuously. They're not even like a, an intermittent pulse carrier like we've seen on the tests I've been doing here. They're actually just like a solid, just wipe out the whole band. So in this way, this system probably isn't gonna help that, but then again, probably nothing is. Um, also EV chargers, things like that have been known to sort of cause this really bad interference. So yeah, there's not really much you can do about that other than sort of changing frequencies in some cases. I definitely think this is gonna help in certain situations. It's definitely working for me here. It's made a difference. I get less timeouts, less kind of retries. And I think that's the thing about running a mesh on the ISM bands. You just have to kind of take everything into account and just try and chip away at a lot of things just a little bit everywhere and you can really kind of make a difference and fine tune um, your mesh so that it actually kind of works pretty well 
Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. T Deck firmware will be out soon. If you want to buy a T Deck, they are back in stock on Lily Go's website now. You can get to them via our affiliate link on our MeshCore website, which goes to help support the MeshCore project. A big thank you to everybody who's helped and supported the MeshCore project so far. We couldn't do it without you. And we've got lots more ideas and lots more things to come with this. So, yeah, it's only going to get better and better. Catch you soon.